video we're going to look at uh, working with fractions and the operations that are involved and some important things to keep in mind is if I'm adding and subtracting fractions I have to have common denominators I'm going to do some examples uh, involving that here in just a second if you're multiplying or dividing you don't need to have common denominators I can just go right through the process of uh, doing the operation with the fractions. All right, so I want to add together one half and one third. Now, I do not have the same denominator, so I have to go through the process of making the same denominators. So the process in doing that is you're going to take the denominator of what's on the right, and the way I make common denominators is by getting a common factor. So I can create that common factor by multiplying the denominator by 3. Now, if I multiply the denominator by 3, I also have to do it to the numerator. So the first fraction on the left is getting multiplied by 3 over 3. And the second fraction here, to create that common denominator, 3 times 2 is 6. I'm going to multiply it by 2 in the denominator and 2 in the numerator. And now when I multiply this together, the 3 times the 1, that gives me 3. 3 times the 2 gives me 6. So I got 3 over 6 plus 1 times 2 is 2. 3 times 2 is 6. So now I have common denominators. Now that the denominators are the same, you leave the denominator alone and you add together the two tops. So my final answer here would be, 5 over 6. Now, let's say I have a whole number and I'm taking away a fraction and I want to go through the process of getting uh, common denominators. Remember that any whole number can be written as a fraction if you give it a denominator 1. And then I repeat the same steps that I just did. I have to create common denominators. Well, I have a denominator 1 on the left and 5 on the right. So the common denominator is going to be in this case, the product of 1 and 5, which is 5. So I'm going to multiply the fraction on the left, the denominator by 5, and the numerator by 5. And I don't need to adjust the fraction on the right because 5 times 1 gives me 5 here on the left-hand side, which is the same as the denominator is on the right. So I can leave the fraction on the right alone. Uh, the 5 times 3 gives me 15. So 3 is the same thing as 15 over 5. Now that the denominators are the same, write my common denominator, and then do the operation with the numerators. 15 minus 1, that's going to give me 14 over 5, and we can leave our answers as improper fractions. Next example here. All right, so now we're looking 2 over 7 minus 3 over 8. I have one denominator, 7. The other denominator here is 8, and I have to create the common denominator, which would be the product of those two. So my new denominator is going to be 8 times 7. So in doing that, I'm going to have to multiply the fraction on the left, both top and bottom, by the 8 to create that common denominator. And the fraction on the right is going to get multiplied, both the bottom and the top, by 7, which is the denominator that is on the left. And now I'm going to multiply the two fractions together. Well, my numerator on the fraction on the left would be 8 times 2, which is 16. And then my denominator, 8 times 7, 56. Do the same thing for the fraction on the right. Well, 8 times 7, we just said was 56. And then 3 times 7 is 21. And so now that I have common denominators, I leave the denominator alone. So I write my uh, denominator is 56. And then do the operation of 16 minus 21 and 16 minus 21 is going to give us negative 5 so I have negative 5 over 56 when I multiply two fractions simply all I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the two numerators together 1 times negative 1 is negative 1 multiply the two denominators together um, 5 times 9 is 45 and then I look to see if I can reduce and I can't reduce so there's my answer so I have a case where I'm multiplying a whole number to a fraction. Well, multiplying a whole number to the fraction, 
you're going to make that whole number become a fraction. So I'm going to put it over top of a 1. And now I'm going to do the same process that we just did. The process of multiplying a two fractions together is the product of the numerators. Now, the fact that the 4 was negative, apply the negative to the numerator, not both the numerator and the denominator. So negative 4 times negative 5 makes positive 20 over, and then the denominator product, 1 times 6, gives me 6. So 20 over 6 is my product. Now I can reduce that because both numbers are even. So I reduce that. That's going to give me 10 divided by 3, or 10 over 3. I can jump right in and say my product of negative 2 fifths times 3 fourths, multiply the numerators together, that gives me negative 6. Uh, 5 times 4, that gives me 20. So I have my product, and now I look to reduce. So negative 6 over 20, both of those numbers are even, so I can divide them by 2 to reduce. That gives me negative 3 over 10. Dividing two fractions, I have to rewrite the division as multiplication. I'm going to do skip, change, flip. So what that means is you're going to skip the first fraction, meaning I'm going to rewrite it just the way it is. So 1 8. Then I'm going to change the operation. So I'm going to change the division into multiplication. And then I flip the second fraction. So 5 halves becomes 2 fifths. Now that I've rewritten the division as multiplication, I multiply my two fractions together. And so negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. 8 times 5 makes 40. And then we can reduce negative 2 over 40 to negative 1 over 20. So whole number being divided by a fraction. In order to do this, before we worry about skip, change, flip, I'm going to rewrite the whole number as a fraction itself. So I'm going to put it underneath the 1. Now I can do the skip, change, flip part, which means write the first fraction the way it is. So negative 5 over 1. Change the division to multiplication. And then flip the second fraction. So 3 over negative 2. And then multiply the fractions together. Negative 5 times 3, negative 15. 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. And I can simplify that because two negatives through division makes positive. This one just looks messy and a lot of people draw a blank on it. Remember that a fraction line right here this means division. Same thing as using the division symbol two dots with a line in between it. So if you wanted, you could rewrite this problem as 7 eighths divided by negative 4 over 3. And then do your skip, change, flip. So 7 eighths times, so change the division to multiply, flip the second fraction. So 3 over negative 4. And then I multiply straight across. 7 times 3 is 21. 8 times negative 4 makes negative 32. And this is uh, a version of our correct answer. Now, these values here, or excuse me, this fraction here, it's not customary to leave the number, or excuse me, to leave the denominator negative in a fraction. It's not necessarily wrong, but more times than not, you're going to see the negative apply to the numerator instead of the denominator. So I'm going to put that negative sign in the numerator.